Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, have you heard that the NRVTA and the RVTAA are teaming up with Camp FEMFO out of Waco, Texas in order to host an RV rally. We will provide you RV campers with discounted rates on RV maintenance, discounted rates on RV sites, and free education on topics such as RV solar, RV winterization, and of course, RV propane systems. So come join us November 10th through 12th in order to relax, gain some knowledge, and get some of those items checked off your maintenance to-do list on your RV. So click the link below to get some more information Go ahead and sign up. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. Hey everybody, I'm here today answering questions. And there was two questions of note that kind of really focused around solar panels. So let's go ahead and cover that. One of the questions is, and it always starts off great. Great video, Todd. Now. You want me to answer your questions? That's a good way to start now. Great video, right? All right, here we go. I got one on here uh, that says, uh, great information. And this is on solar. The question is, is if you cover your roof with solar panels, you know, how do you inspect you know, the roof and how do you seal and reseal um, your roof? So let's go ahead and cover that. Now, first and foremost, I know a lot of people don't like the thought of putting solar panels on the roof, which is kind of funny because I, I get what they're saying is I don't want holes in my roof. And I'm always going to point out there's so many holes in your roof. I mean, you have a uh, so many different things up there. It's got 16 plus screws, so it's no big deal. But you got to do it the right way. Okay, the whole purpose of you know doing this correctly is is to prevent water intrusion. Right here, I am drilling a hole in the roof. How do I prevent the water from getting in there? Okay. Now, first and foremost, I will tell you, when we put solar panels up, typically you don't have seals on the sides, right? Um, if you have a membrane, typically we wrap the membrane around the sides and put them under the J-rails and connect them over there. It's the extreme front and the extreme end. Now, I will tell you, we never put solar panels on the extremities, right? So that is still open. So to quickly answer, how do you check your seals when the solar panels are up there? And that is, you don't put solar panels any place where there's seals unless you're floating over it. Boom, you can still get up there meticulously and slowly check all your seals. Now, what's the proper way of putting those up there? It's really no secret, right? If you were to take off, say, um, your um, solar light up there, whatever it may be that's up there, I call it a solar light, the ones that's in the shower where they, they give you the roof too small so you're looking out seeing your neighbors while you're standing there naked taking a shower. All right, so here's the thing. When we cut a hole in the roof, here's how we make sure, here's how we make sure we don't get any water in there. First and foremost, we, we pre-measure everything and then we pre-drill. If I know where my feet are gonna go, I'm gonna pre-drill the hole. Now, I've got a hole that goes through that membrane, whatever it may be, EPDM, TPO, fiberglass, uh, PVC, um, whatever there may be, there's a hole, right? I've measured everything, there's a hole. I'm also gonna put some caulk in that hole because when I drive the screw in there, I want the screw to catch that caulk and go in there. Now, before I put anything down, before I put the screw in everything else, I've pre-measured my foot. Underneath my foot, I'm gonna put butyl tape and I'm gonna put butyl tape specifically where the holes for my screws are gonna go in the foot. Butyl tape is kinda of like caulk, but it doesn't dry, right? So it stays very pliable and it goes up under as we're putting stuff down. So here I've got, I've pre-drilled the holes. I've got butyl tape underneath. I, I peel the plastic you know, cover on there. Then I set that down. I've already put some caulk in the hole. So now I take my screw and I drive into the hole through the butyl tape into the caulk laden hole. All right, say that three times fast, caulk laden hole. All right, now I've got the screw head on top, okay? I also have a potential of water getting under the foot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do everything I can to seal around the foot with some caulk, okay? If there's a solar panel, somebody say, how do you do that, okay? You don't have to put the tube behind there, you can put your silicone, whatever it is, okay, if it's gonna be a rubber membrane, can't put silicone, but you can put your caulk, say DACO or whatever there is, on a stick, you know, on your finger, and you're gonna seal that foot in all the way around. 
still not done. You still have the screw head. So now you're gonna seal around that, okay? Basically, with the caulk, with the butyl tape, and the proper way of uh, pre-drilling, you're making sure that there's absolutely no hole, okay? There's no chance for water intrusion. It's relatively simple once you understand that. It just takes a little bit of time to do that. So now let's come back and inspect it. Typically, the feet are just beyond the periphery of the solar panel. And typically, I put those on the sides. Remember, we don't have to worry about the sides. I don't put them in the extreme front or at the extreme end. So don't even have to get on the RV. I can look on the sides, standing on a ladder, checking those feet out. I also put enough on there that I, you know, even when I come back to check it, you put more than enough on there. I don't prefer lap sealant because it does self-level and it spreads out. And lap sealant, say like Dicor, Alpha Systems, is acrylic, 40% water, it's gonna shrink. So what if I'm gonna put a permanent structure up there, it could be Silcaflex or something like that. Again, I'm still gonna use this term out there. It's called a polyurea. It's like silicone, but it sticks to rubber. Silicone does it. And it's nearly 100% solids. It's got a high value of solids. Well, what does that mean? It doesn't shrink. So whatever I put it out there, if I put this much of a strip on there, chances are I'm gonna have this much of a strip, maybe ever so slightly less in a few years. If I use an acrylic-based substance, say like with Dicor, I put this much on there and I come back in a year, I only got this much. Come back in two years, I only got this much, so I gotta reseal it. So I like to use a permanent type of a seal, something that's high solids. Silicone, if you have, say, a fiberglass roof, let's say it's a motor coach or something like that, silicone is great. Clean, clean the surface, right? Let it get a good stick. And honestly, I mean, how do I check that? Same way I would whether I have solar panels or not get up there slowly, get my eyes on it, slowly, meticulously look for it. What you're looking for is pinholes, just a small pinhole, size of a needle. That's the worst hole to have. Because by the time you figure out inside the RV that you have a leak, a slow leak, it's already too late. So I'm, I'm, slow, I'm carefully looking at them, and I'll do it once a year, sometimes twice a year, spring and fall, kind of looking at that stuff. So really not that hard to do, it's just, it takes, it's laborious, it takes a little bit of time, but it is a DIY, okay? There was also another question, and someone had asked, is it possible, when the solar panels come down, for them to be hooked up in reverse? Oh, absolutely. We have ruined more batteries out there and more solar controllers out there to what we call reverse polarity. Your solar panels are DC driven. It means we've got a positive on one side, negative on the other, okay? And the question more specifically said, you know, can a panel be hooked up backwards? The battery itself charges the system or, you know, runs the 12 volts and can charge, but the solar panel connected over to it is getting a code saying it's got reverse polarity. Absolutely. It is easy. When you, you look at a solar panel, you got two black wires. It's easily confusing because they're both black, right? You just hooked it up and someone, you know, just kind of guessed and said this out hooked up. So luckily you got some type of control device that says, hey, that's reverse polarity. Now the chances of that still working, kind of unclear. Here's the thing. Reverse polarity fries things instantly, right? Because electrons move nearly at the speed of light, it can fry things instantly. So how do you check polarity? Okay, this is where you need a multimeter, set it on volts DC. Red is positive, black is negative on your multimeter. So what you have to do is plug into both of those probes, right, from the solar panel, whether it's gonna be the two wires coming down. Red is positive, black is negative. If you, just guess, hit that red on a wire that's coming down that's positive and a black that's coming down, negative, and your multimeter says that you got positive voltage. Doesn't matter what the voltage is, if it's positive, then whatever cable is on that red is the positive cable, okay? If you get a negative showing up on your multimeter, then it's reversed. The negative or the black wire is actually the positive wire, right, where your black probe is. So you can confirm that before you hook it back up. So that's what you need to do. Don't just trust that it says that it's got reverse polarity. Get yourself a small multimeter. You don't have to be... You know, buy a super expensive one, buy a little cheap one, and you can check polarity. Volts DC, whatever wire you touch, whatever wire you touch, if you get a positive number, the wires are correct polarity. If you get a negative number with a minus sign on it, reverse polarity. Now you would switch your wires, okay? 
So you're checking it where the wires are. Well, where do I check that data? I could check it between the solar panel and the solar controller, or I could check it after the solar controller. You really need to check both locations. If it's coming in reverse polarity into the solar controller, chances are you fried the solar controller. Okay? Hopefully the solar controller was fast enough not to get damaged. So you got to check both the wires going into the solar controller and then the wires out of the solar controller over to the battery. Now, if the wires out of the solar controller were going over to the battery, well, you'd already let the magic smoke out because the battery is going to instantly let you know that that's reverse polarity. There's nothing stopping the battery from frying that solar controller. So if your system is saying reverse polarity, chances are from the solar panel, those wires to the solar controller, those are the ones you need to check. There's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to RVTechCourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're out there in the video, Roll the bloopers. All right, did we do a mic check? Yes. When? You didn't have your ears on. Check one, check, check. Some of you call it, what is that thing called anyway? Sunroof? Sun, no, it's not sunroof. Man, this ain't some convertible. What do they call those things? I don't know, right? It's a dome. It's a totally gone. It's a dome. Whatever, right? All right say that three times fast. Cock laden hole. It's easily confusable, right? Now here, confusable, is that a word? It's easily confusing. <laughs> Ask a tech to speak grammar. The other way to answer my questions is, I'm a useless keyboard warrior. And I'm gonna point something out and say that you're wrong, and then I can have the whole world know that I was wrong, and I, me, was personally right. I could take either way. Bam.